Welcome back to another day in the studio. So this is going to be the continuation of this Rembrandt master study. So it is completely dry. Remember I'm working on a 9 by 12 inch uh, aluminum panel. So it tends to dry a little bit faster if you're working on a smoother surface. Remember last time I started on, I started just using uh, raw umber and that's all I used for the umber drawing. So if you missed the last one, please check out that video so you can see how this was started. So now we're going to get into the underpainting. And this time I feel like I'm going to experiment a little bit with a Verdaccio style underpainting. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But what that is it will involve a monochromatic underpainting that's slightly greenish. So let me show you what I'm going to use for that. Alright, so I'm going to use lead white number one. This is a Rublev color and the same drawing color that we used before, which is raw umber. But I'm going to mix this with this color. This is a transparent green. So this is Verona Green Earth from Rublev. So let's go ahead and mix that up with the palette knife. Alright, so now you see the lead white and the unmixed green with raw umber so i'm going to go ahead and mix them now so it depends on how greenish you want it to be uh, verona green earth is not a very at least from what i've experimented with it's not a very strong green color and for those of you that don't have access to rublev brand colors you can go for something like a sap green or terra vert so those two are good uh, substitutes to use instead of the Verona Green Earth or if you buy raw umber greenish I think that's a uh, Winsor Newton brand then that will already solve this uh, little thing here for you so what I'm gonna do now that this is kind of thoroughly mixed is I'm going to mix a little bit of it with the lead white and just to see what shade it is going to be and this has just dried paint on it. Um, I haven't really been taking care of this palette that much, so it, it's just, it's what it is. This is all dry, and I made sure to clean it off with um, a little bit of Gamsol before starting this uh, video. So now you're seeing it's not, um, it's not that greenish. So it's more of kind of like a a grayed out color so I'm gonna add a little more yes I'm adding a little bit of the already mixed up white into this but that's okay so without cleaning the palette knife let's just use what's on the palette knife and see if this is any different so I want to go for something that's slightly more greenish and this is really gonna be all the mixing that you're gonna see there's not going to be much mixing footage, so just to get kind of a greenish shade. So that's a little bit closer. I mean, the best thing for this underpainting is that it's not too green. So a little bit more green. And you get to decide how green you want it to be. Like, I, I don't want it to be like the Incredible Hulk green. So there's that. Let's try this again. That's a little more greenish. And by more greenish, I mean it's basically just gray again. But it's gray to the point where it's not a brownish gray like these are. And I know it's a little difficult to see because there's dried paint here. But yeah, that should be greenish enough to get going with this Verdaccio. Alright, so this is going to be the part where I'm going to remind you that I am not claiming to paint exactly in the technique that Rembrandt used. I am not claiming to say that this is going to be exactly in the style that this Rembrandt painting was created in the past. What I'm saying is that this is going to be a master study that's going to be a study of the painting, of the Rembrandt painting. So uh, I'm gonna show you the premixture that we did there. And I'm gonna show you Though it looks grayish here, it should actually be quite greenish compared to the um, compared to the uh, tone of the uh, 
the panel. So that's just one little shade there and that is quite greenish. And one thing that's nice about Verona Green Earth is that it is a natural green so it's derived from now I'm not trying to sell this color to you uh, I, I could really care less if this was um, an organic color or inorganic or synthetic or not synthetic it's just nice to know that the Verona green earth this color that I used to tint the raw umber is a it's a natural pigment so it, it comes from the earth it's not uh, a naturally or a synthetically unnatural color so if I were to go with like a viridian or something to tint the um, to tint this raw umber it, it might be a little bit uh, disjointed looking so I'm going for planes and the goal of the Verdaccio the goal of the underpainting in general is just to make the drawing stronger that's the main goal but also it has another goal which is to set up the um, set up the foundation for the color so once again I'm using a Rublev lead white number one which is the linseed oil based lead white raw umber from Winsor Newton and I tinted the raw umber with uh, Verona Green Earth and th there are moments in this Rembrandt painting in particular here here and here where I see some uh, greenish looking colors and I don't know if that's from the way the painting was photographed or it could be that Rembrandt just painted it that way. I don't I don't really know. Now with an underpainting, as I usually tell my students, it's best to work lighter and brighter than you ultimately think you need to go. And I'm gonna to have to be applying the brush strokes in a downward direction because my light source is from up there and it's, it's not very um, it's, it's not at an angle uh, at a steep angle so I have to angle the brush strokes more uh, kind of vertically at a slight angle going in this direction remember this is a rather long YouTube video compared to the usual YouTube videos so please feel free to draw or paint along with me and I highly recommend that you do Rembrandt Master Studies. These Master Studies are I think one of the best ways to learn the art of painting. Another nice thing about this layer is that it's kind of a it's a freeing layer. It's a freeing thing to do because you don't have to worry about color at all. You're more focused in the form and developing the form with monochrome, but at a relatively, <coughs> excuse me, at a relatively high key in terms of value. So you're making the values a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter. So remember, as things get further away from the light they tend to get darker meaning the angle that it makes with respect to the light as they get closer to facing the light meaning parallel with the light source they will get lighter so you can already visualize even with this small amount of stuff that we've done here you can already visualize the form starting to to read on the surface And I'm using a fairly used up, a uh, really beat up. Uh, this used to be flat, but this is more of a filbert now. Uh, <clears throat> bristle brush, size two, 
silver brush. Now there's one key word that's missing in the conversation in terms of Rembrandt painting and um, that key word is impasto. So with the impasto, I think that the impasto layer should be the color layer. So even though I'm doing a lot of transitions here with the under painting, with the Verdaccio, I'm still going to mix it one piece at a time when we get into this with color. So I'm not going to do too many glazes, although I, I might do some glazes. And there will be some textural buildup with the underpainting. I'm not saying that there won't be any, but at the moment I'm not doing any impasto. And I think it's a good idea to get the value down first before attempting impasto and for those of you that are new to this impasto just means thick paint and if you're new to Rembrandt uh, Rembrandt is in my opinion one of the, the best portrait painters of all all of history art history but also he's very well known for his use of impasto and more recent scientific studies have found uh, different compounds in his paintings. So he would mix other, he would put other stuff in his, in his um, oil paint to give it more of a, a thick layer of paint. Now, not a lot of painters these days actually do underpaintings. Uh, at least from what I've seen, not a lot of painters will do a, uh, a fully monochromatic underpainting. This is also called a closed grisaille. So an open grisaille is what we did here, where we left the lights open. A closed grisaille is where we're closing the lights. And I like to use bristle brushes it's because they can pick up a lot of paint. And whenever there's too much of a glare like that, I'll just use a, a, a blender brush just to get the brush strokes to move down so it's not too heavy of a layer. Now I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to have a light brush and a dark brush. These are both extremely, as you can see, that uh, used up. Now a lot of green there for the pupil. I may put in a touch of black for the iris later. And I don't want it to intrude. 
with the skin tones, but it might be something worth putting down. So one thing you're probably wondering is why the green? Why not do a purple underpainting? Why not do a red underpainting or or, or whatever? Why not? Why, why green? So a uh, green underpainting, Verdaccio style underpainting, I have actually never done. So this is my first time doing a greenish underpainting. Obviously you know I've done many monochromatic underpaintings. A greenish underpainting, I theorize, will help to contrast the warmer colors and to create a greater sense of depth in the color than a simple um, you know, uh, a simple, just a gray underpainting. But the green has to be very subtle. If you put too much green, you're going to be fighting the green when you start to add color. If you're more of an impatient painter that doesn't want to even deal with underpaintings, then you don't really have to. I usually don't do a uh, grisaille like this, as you've, you may have seen with my other videos. I just go right in with color. But this is just for the sake of doing something different. Lead white is also a really nice to use for this stage because it dries relatively quickly and it is a generally more stable it's generally more stable to use than titanium white though if you don't want to work with lead you can use titanium white Now obviously back in Rembrandt's time, titanium white didn't exist, so he didn't really have a choice. But lead white has really nice properties to it that are not attainable with titanium white. The closest substitute I found is um, flake white replacement from Gamblin. But as I always say, paint with it, don't mess with it when it comes to oil painting materials. That should be said for all oil painting materials, not just flake white. You still shouldn't be running your fingers through titanium white just because it's generally safe you still may not want to be running your fingers across it. And it's not like the lead is going to just jump out of the painting and attack you. It's not a dangerous thing. This is not a dangerous activity unless I was you know using my fingers and smudging the paint and then you know drinking a cup of tea in general if you just keep the paint out of your hands wear gloves whenever you put the paint onto your palette or handle the paint tube and you'll be fine Remember that the photo reference is linked in the description box of this video.
And another word of advice about a Verdaccio underpainting is typically you want to have a warm brown tone for your panel or for your canvas. That way the Verdaccio will show through in the skin tones. If the tone of the canvas were to have been cooler than this, it would have been better to just start with skin tone right away. Because then you would layer warm over top of cool. As I mentioned before, it's actually um, more beneficial to layer skin tones over top of a cooler surface. Doesn't mean you can't layer skin tone over this. It's just a little easier if you're working over top of a cooler tone. And don't overdo your highlights. So as I'm putting in brighter lights, you see that I'm actually kind of flattening it out. If you make your highlights too bright, this one is almost actually too bright, it will, the underpainting will take on a kind of metallic look. It'll look like it's made out of, of metal. So just be mindful of that. Now like I mentioned in the beginning, this is not going to be, I'm not going to cover the uh, everything with the um, Rodaccio, though I guess it would be an uh, interesting experiment if I did, but it's just mainly for the skin tones. And I am going to use the tone of the panel wherever I can to to do some of the work. You're seeing like some of the mid-tones showing through. This is very similar to um, like a white chalk drawing. If I was doing a drawing over top of tone paper and I was going over it with white chalk. It's kind of similar.
So now I'm gonna have to switch to a larger brush. So this is another size two brush, but it is larger in that it's a size two um, extra long filbert. In general, you can use whatever size brush you want. People usually tell you to use a larger brush because it makes you cover more. But in general, a smaller brush will give you more control. But that's completely up to you. Whatever brush you think is necessary for the job. And the Verona green earth has some kind of some a, a particle feel to it like most natural pigments do it's not as um, waxy feeling as the raw umber on its own is which is nice doesn't really do any it doesn't make a difference in the painting it just feels nice on the brush One thing I want you to take note of is that at no point in this Verdaccio underpainting am I using any medium. None at all. And that's because of fat over lean. You want your layer, your initial layers to be the leanest meaning the least amount of medium, in this case none. And the fact that we're working on an aluminum panel, this, this has to be one of the most archival paintings I, I've probably done in a while on this YouTube channel. Alright, so I'm going to raise the key a little bit in the lights. Now this is the point where you want to make corrections in your drawing wherever possible. Here I see that this is getting a little too I want to say a little too uh, wide. So I'm going to go in with just the uh, raw umber and green mixed together. And put a slight little line just to push that shape in you also want to know the drying times 
of each of your layers. You don't want to just be guessing it. I know that this will be dry, touch dry in about 24 hours. If I were to be working with, um, say, titanium white, then it would take maybe 72 hours, 48 hours. And you want your initial layers to be the fastest drying as well. That's one of the main purposes of fat over lean. Traditionally, mediums in the past were just linseed oil and walnut oil. And those would slow the drying rate down, so that's why they would say use less of that in the earlier layers because you don't want a slow dryer. The problem is that if the earlier layer is a, uh, let's just say the earlier layer is super slow drying, and it's kind of in between drying and then I put another layer on top of it that's faster drying that second layer will start to peel off and you don't want that Notice so I'm switching to the smaller brushes when we get into these little tight corners. And try as much as you can to turn this into a soft whisper delineating the corner of the nose from the side of the face and not an outline Now we're going to go into the shadow planes. So the darker it gets, the more greenish it's going to look. Let's see how I'm already correcting some drawing stuff.
like I said, letting the tone, I'm letting the tone of the panel do some of the work wherever possible. But I think I've gotten to a point now with this that I'm gonna shut the camera off, work on it a little bit off camera, and then we'll return to a, a point where it's a little bit more developed. So what I'm gonna do now is just go and develop more stuff. I guess maybe put something in there for the ear, uh, but develop more in particular around uh, this region of the painting and then build it, uh, build the planes even, um, you know, a stronger sense of contrast but at the same time making the values a little bit lighter than I would eventually want the painting to go so we will return in just a second and there you have it after some extra time adding more subtlety to the face and bringing up the light a little bit brighter as you can see uh, you know I didn't put that much detail in the in the uh, the ear or I didn't put any color out here I mean um, any grisaille color I didn't put any grisaille color out here remember this is a verdaccio so this is a greenish underpainting however I guess at this point uh, using the word green is a kind of a over approximation of the color as I said the uh, Verona green earth that I put into the mixture is a very uh, thin transparent green so the only green that you really see here is maybe in the shadows but it's, it's very minuscule so what's next with this painting is just to let it dry and then we're going to continue to build this painting going in with color next time that being said i really hope that you found this video to be helpful those of you that are wondering about the upload schedule um I'm going to stick with pre-recorded videos for the time being so you're going to have a new pre-recorded video every Wednesday and every Saturday around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so just check out my YouTube channel if you want to see more uh, painting videos such as this one please subscribe to my youtube channel and make sure that your notifications are turned on so you know whenever i upload a video but that being said uh, saturday mornings and wednesday mornings around 11 a.m eastern standard time is when a new upload will come out so that being said if you want to pursue your painting education with me further please check out my online classes on patreon the link is posted in the description box down below remember my online classes just begin at ten dollars a month and uh, you know there's more and more benefits uh, available to you if you uh, check out my patreon that being said uh, again thank you so much for watching this video i wish you the very best in all of your work and i'll see you on the next one.